on the water a little late. Day three and conditions are good. Just a little light onshore wind, which is gonna be favorable when I get around the bend there. It's gonna be a tailwind. Ah, you never know. This big of an island, it kind of makes its own wind. It can bend the wind any way it wants to. The fleet's pretty far offshore today, except for a couple boats inshore. So I'm thinking that it's probably coho and they're spread. I think they're using about a 60 foot deep net, so it's not too deep. So I'm gonna put gear out for the first time for salmon, a little uh, coyote spoon and spin it on one of my little weight systems. Just to, That just keeps it under. If they're going to be up at the surface feeding, they're going to be doing it this morning. So, all my snaps, all my swivels, all my knots double checked. And I'm just going to drop that back about 100 feet and cruise down the coast. If I pick one up, all the better. If not, I'll just jig up some more cod this afternoon. I'm a couple miles south of where I camped last night and just moseying really slow, trolling. But uh, here's the next canyon or inlet. And I don't think there's any lakes back there, but I think this is a long, narrow arm that goes back. You see the hills back there, or the mountains, all weathered down to the rock. So no topsoil up top there, no trees. Probably significant runoff in the storms. And a real small entrance, so yeah, I might come back and try to hit this place on the way back north. Kind of in a hurry to get down there before the storm hits, but some of these bays are worth exploring. Maybe some lakes in there. Here's a good look at that valley by the arm that's just south of Kendrick Bay, about two miles. You can see the uh, opening. It's pretty, it's pretty refined, pretty small as far as these go around on this island, but it's got a real narrow opening, which tells me it's a pretty good shelter and there's a boat in there already. He's just tucked in a little bit, just getting out of the weather. Probably getting a late start or repairing something. A little further along, I've been on the water about two hours. I've been lollygagging and fishing, but a lot of boats working right in here. This is the second arm that I'm passing after I left um, my campsite last night. Some salmon jumping. It's the first time I've seen a couple salmon jump. So there might be denser schools down here, or there might be the pinks down here. But uh, these guys have it blocked up pretty good with nets. They're stringing their nets out and letting their nets act like gill nets before they wrap them into a, a purse. So I'm going to let them do their thing instead of put a line down and mess with it. There'll be salmon, plenty of salmon. I'm going to get around the horn here because i got to get off the water in about... Um, about an hour I'm gonna have to start thinking about a beach to land on and hang out until the tide turns around again. It's kind of chaos back there going through that stuff. Everybody's working it and there's fish jumping so must be a fresh batch of, they look like big thick silvers, big thick coho. Nice fish though, you guys are making money, everybody's happy. All right, I did the nav, and I'm about, about six miles south of Kendrick Bay where I camped. That last point you can see down there in the mist is the southern end of the island. It's about five nautical miles south of me. At this speed, it should take about an hour and I've got about another hour of good current before the weather. the tide's gonna change, so I'd be around that point at slack. So perfect conditions. I gotta just step on the gas, get around that horn, and uh, I can get it all done before noon today. All right, this eagle flew over me with a fish. And he dropped the fish back into the water. Oh, I see why. He couldn't carry it. It was, looked like a pretty big fish. He couldn't hang on to it, but he dropped it, and here it is. I must have come up on the gill nets. Ah, oh, it's bycatch from the gill net. That's what it is. Yeah, here we go. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. So that's bycatch. It's got gill marks in it. 
Yeah, it came up on the gill net. Yeah, that's a delicious fish. Well, the eagle loses and I win today. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Oh, nice. Well, there's dinner. That's one of my favorite fish to eat. White tender meat. Fantastic. Yeah, right there. Big old humpy working right inside of me. Try to give him some room. Slide around him and get going. Ha! More life down here by the tip of the island. There's a bunch of eagles down here trying to get something off the surface. Now, eagles won't get their they won't get their feathers wet. They can't fly if they do. So they're trying to scrape something off the surface. Probably more floating black cod from that gill net or trawler. And right next to them is a humpback whale lunge feeding. There's the, uh, what's it coming out? Oh yeah, right there. <laughs> so there's, a, there's a big humpback lunge feeding right in the middle of it. Yeah, geez. It's been busy out here. I'm probably gonna uh, head right in shore and kind of thread the needle between all this life going on. Yeah, that guy just came up right in front of me. I'm trying to get in shore of him, but the, uh, yeah, the whales are lunge feeding. There's auklets out there. They're diving birds. Like it's right there. And uh, yeah, Mr. Whale. I think there's two of them in here. They're down there picking up all the herring they can. So. A lot of life going on in here. Yeah, you can't, right in front of me. There you go. There. Oh, there's another one lunge feeding out there. Came up. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm just approaching the end. That uh, that last hill going down there between the gap. That's the end of the island, so I want to get around that in the next 30 minutes or so before the tide switches out on me completely. All right, come across these guys. They're hooked up to a big king. Must have come down from Craig. Looks like a big guy, at least 20 pounder. Get him right there. I'm not gonna get the net job. I'll get it over the rail though. Yeah, you got it in. Oh yeah, good 25 pound fish. Well, there's the tip. That's the southern end of the island, about half a mile away. Just wind just died just dead calm it's gonna slack water that fishing boat is uh talked to the skipper he's down from ketchikan so he's got a a long charter with those guys coming down from ketchikan to, to fish kings in this area he said it's pretty slow he said all the uh the fleet up there with the persanes are all netting up chum salmon which i'm not interested in because the fish uh first they're not going to bite very easily in the salt water and second they uh it's just not a really good tasting salmon they're netting them up and largely using them for probably for uh the egg sack they make good uh salmon row egg sack but yeah it's about well it's about 10 30 in the morning so how long have i been gone about 44 hours from ketchikan to here which is about 75 nautical miles and that's absolutely flying for a fully loaded touring kayak just perfect conditions probably could have done it quicker probably could have done it in two days in these conditions but i lollygagged and fished and i'd hoped under best conditions it would take four days to get here and it took uh about two and a half so i'm way ahead of schedule more time to play and tomorrow is going to be perfect like this. No wind whatsoever before the storm comes. So I'm going to enjoy it and do some fishing. First, I'm going to get this guy on the grill. 
make a nice big lunch out of them. Navigational marker for the end of the island. You can tell the wind's up on it. It's probably blowing 12 knots in my face and the tide's changed, so I'm actually blowing backwards right now. I gotta get around that horn and start moving my way up. So I'm around the western edge of the point and it is still ripping solid four to five knots of current. All I could do to struggle against it, obviously couldn't take the camera out and film it, but uh, I guess the tide's still going out, or at least the current's still going out, or going south, so I'm counting on a tide change and then the current going north. Um, I think that's a bay, I'm not sure. I'm trying to pull it up. So I've got this long bay right next to me. What's that distance say? It's about two nautical miles. Huh, that bay must be around that next point and then go back in a couple miles. I wonder if that's the one that goes to the other lake. I have to pull my chart out to see, but I'm gonna try to keep moving a little bit. And then I gotta stop and eat some lunch, take a rest. Searching for a beach. This looks like a good one in here. I can see kind of white, means more exposed rocks. And I don't know if it's coming out, but there's a darker kind of slot between the trees. And it looks like a little bit of a depression on the beach, which tells me that there's probably a river. So there's probably fresh water just back in the forest. And then, uh, of course, there's an otter right there staring at me. Wondering why I'm talking to a little blue box in front of my face. Are you waving at me? Uh, are you giving me the finger? Uh, there's a lot of otters, not in the density I saw that yesterday, was it? But uh, yeah, they're just hanging around, real curious. Expect one of them will probably be up here on my lap pretty soon. So there's my beach options. There's another beach around that rock there, but there's a landing there, landing there. The problem is right now there's a, a lot of pretty sizable boulders, nothing smooth to land on. It's going to take its toll on the hull, and you can see a little wave in there. So that every now and then that little swell comes in, surges up on that stuff. Doesn't seem like much, but when you get up on it, it's going to kind of do a number on your boat when it just picks it up and drops it a couple inches on a sharp rock. So I'm going to wait, see if I can get the uh, tide to come up here a bit so that I have an option to get up on that uh, lighter colored material, which is much smaller stones. Anyway, I'm uh, on a little rock shelf here. Another seal landing. And this is where I'm going to hang out for a little bit. See if I can get that fish up here. And I can't even unpack and start cooking. Well, I guess I'm eating nuts and drinking water until the tide comes up.